Good morning, Civil Engineering and Architecture. Welcome to the third part of the SHED project. Let's go ahead and begin. So right now, we updated our walls to SHED walls, which is awesome. However, we don't have a way to get into this building right now. So let's go ahead and add a door. First thing, make sure you're on the floor level. And if you're not, double click on it. Then go over to where it says door, click on door, and you're going to have an option to place down a door now. If you hover towards one of the walls, Revit automatically understands that you want to put a door on a wall. Because where else would you put a door if not at a wall? And I'm sure there's some exceptions to that rule, but let's just for now assume that doors always go at walls. Now this door that we have, a single flush door, is kind of lame. It's not that impressive and I want something with a little more kick to it. So, to get more door options than the ones that are provided, head over to this button over here that's called Load Family. And if you don't have this option, just click on the carrot top until you do. Click on Load Family, and it's gonna load a series of options, and you always have to be spe um, specific to the option you select. In this case, we're working with doors. So the only folder we're allowed to work in is the doors folder. Don't go looking in electrical for a door, because even if you find a door in there, it's not going to work like it should. So here's doors, I'm gonna double click on that, and you're gonna notice that we have a lot of options. If I just click on one and then use the up and down keys, you can see a bunch of doors that are available to us. Uh, this door looks pretty cool the single decorative two. So I'm going to use this one. If you want to use a different door, awesome. Just don't use a garage. Uh, all we want is a door. So I'm going to click on this one. Revit's going to automatically load it in. And it's also going to give us some options for sizes. So default size is 36 by 84. That's fine. Handicap accessible. So we're going to add it to our house. And I'm going to put my door over here you're going to notice right away that when we place the door down it dimensioned it for us that was very nice of it and we also have some options with these arrows so click escape a few times to let go of the door cursor or else you might accidentally place another door select the door again and what these options are going to allow you to do is it's going to allow you to adjust your door inside or out left or right so you can get your door just the way you want it for our shed, let's have the door open up inward and then probably closest to the wall. So something like this. So when you open it up, you can walk right into the shed. Now using the same technique, we're going to go ahead and add windows. So head back to the architecture tab, find window, click on window, and we have an option of a fixed window right now and all these different sizes. I don't really like the fixed window. I think it's a lame looking window. So I'm going to go to load family and now I'm going to go to the windows folder. Here's windows. Double click on that and you can go through the different types of windows. I kind of like this one over here. The combination RTP with rim. So I'm going to use that one and I believe we needed two windows for this project. So I'm going to place one window let's say here, and one window, let's say here. So same deal as with the door. You can adjust the window if you want it closer to the inside of the building or closer to the outside. Typically, windows are closer to the outside, so the, like this is fine. But if you have a preference for this project, I don't really care. When we're using codes, you have to follow the codes there's no exception. Okay, so we got two lovely windows. Now let's go ahead and section off a room. So if you remember, we had to have a room in our building. So let's add some interior walls. I'm going to click on the wall at the architecture tab. And I'm going to draw a room that's, let's say, maybe six feet from this wall. And it's going to go out, uh, let's say, nine feet is fine. 
So I'm going to click there and I'm going to drag it down to the wall. So this is going to be our interior room. These walls are way too thick right now for interior walls. So I'm going to select one and I'm going to change it and let's see if we have some interior options and we do to an interior 3 and 1 8 inch wall. This is going to be a great wall for our shed because it's very slim. Yep. And we're going to adjust this wall as well. So I'm going to make this one 4 and 7 8 and the reason I'm doing that is because I'm going to have the door on this wall so we're going to make this wall a little bit thicker to support the door nicely. Now both these walls are narrower than this so that's awesome. Let's go ahead and add a door. I'm just going to use my decorative door again and if I build it this way it's going to ram into the wall. That's a problem. So let's build it into the room and since it's an interior door I'm actually going to make it a little bit smaller. Let's do a 30 by 84. Yeah, like that. Whoops. Perfect. So now we have our exterior door and our interior door leading into our room. If you want to check it out in the 3D view, whoops, you can. And you'll notice right away that that interior wall that I built was set to 20 feet and not 8 feet like we had originally planned it to be. So I'm going to select this over here and I can adjust it to 8 feet but it's going to kind of look weird if you do that. So if you wanted to raise up all the way to the roof and then stop, what you can do is go over to this option that's called attach top to base and then select the roof and it's going to put the wall into your building and it's kind of hard to see so that it collides with the roof but it does not pass it. So I'm going to demonstrate that again. I'm going to select this wall I'm going to go to attach top slash base and then I'm going to click on the roof and it's going to automatically adjust it for me. So it's in there but it's not going past the roof. So yeah. So our shed's looking pretty awesome. Yes there is no furniture in it but we're going to do furniture in a later project so it's not a big deal for this one. What we're going to do now is we're going to render this shed and renderings where all the magic happens. It's when you take something as simple as this and you make it look awesome. So I'm going to position it in a cool way, let's say like this, and then hover over to here and these are some options you have, uh, different visual options. Click on the second one that looks like an isometric cube where my mouse is at and then switch it over to the mode realistic. And if you switch it over to realistic you should get a cool looking shed. Something like this. Now the walls are gray that kind of looks a little bit lame but in a later project we're going to change the color of the walls. Overall though it looks pretty nice. Hopefully your shed looks something like this one. and let's go ahead and render this shed and see what it looks like. So I'm going to position it like so and I'm going to render it doing the following things. Hover over to where you have the teapot, click on the teapot and when you do that you're going to get rendering options as these. Now the more time you put into rendering an object the better it's going to look. So position it how you want it and then choose some settings. Draft is the lowest and then you can go better depending on your computer and the amount of time you want to invest in it. Let's go ahead and render a draft really quick. And there you can see there is the shed that we just designed. It looks worse than actually just having it in realistic. So let's go ahead and change it maybe to high. I'm going to render a high quality image of the shed and I'm going to pause my video while this renders. 
Okay, and it just finished rendering. So this is a nice rendered vision of this shed. This is a high quality. If I had more time, I could invest in the best quality. But for a project like this, this is fine. There wasn't a lot of detail anyway. Now, before you exit this, you have to save this rendering. Or else if you close it out, it's going to automatically delete the rendering. So go to Save to Project, click on that, and then give it a name. So external shed like that and then if you close it out the rendering will undo itself but now in your browser area you have a area called renderings and if you open up the folder of renderings you're gonna notice that that external shed I just saved is over here and you can access it whenever you want Okay, so that was a lot of information to take in, so soak it in for a bit, and that's going to conclude this third part. We're going to have one final part, putting it all together, and then you'll be done the shed project. So, until then, see you later.